We're harvesting some of our Jerusalem artichokes. We're also thinning out the strawberry plants. All that and more on the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Extra. Big tuber then. Mm -hmm. Sponsored in part by DollarSeed.com for your flowers, vegetables, and herbs. All organic seeds, all only a dollar a pack. ManureTea.com, authentic haven brand, 100% natural soil condition for the home garden. Squareman Worm Farm, organic farm and gardening supply. Located in Plymouth, Wisconsin. SquarewomanWormFarm.com. LittleSpringsSoap.com, handmade soap with simple, recognizable ingredients. The Garden Stamp, stamp planting for more efficient, effective, and speedy planting. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Extra. I'm Holly Baird. And I'm Joey Baird, and we're in the large garden today, and it's time to harvest our artichokes, our Jerusalem artichokes, or sunchokes that some people call them. Now they take about 120 to 150 days to reach maturity. They are started with a tuber, and they can get, as you can see, somewhere upwards of 10 to 20 feet based on soil condition. Now once you've got them in a location in your garden, you're never going to extract them. They're always going to keep coming back year after year. So each plant should, on average, produce about 8 to 10 pounds of tubers. So we'll see how that works. So you want a full sunlight, 120 to 150 days, and the plant will tell you when it's time to harvest. As they have here, they've died back after it's gotten cold. So we're going to harvest a few uh, plants here. Now, a lot of people will say, well, you can harvest all of them and store them in the basement. Other people say that harvesting them, only the quantity that you want to eat is best because they can get very soft on you and they won't last very long. So about a week's worth of harvesting is what we're going to do here. I and mean, they're talking about they're really good for diabetics as well. Yeah, they have, they're kind of comparable to like a potato. They're a nice root vegetable, but you can eat them fresh or you can cook them up in like a stir fry. But they have a, a low sugar count. They're less starchy than a potato. Right. So what we're going to do here is on these plants here, to make it easier on us, I'm just going to cut back the uh, bend off or cut back here the top portion. And we can compost these. Uh, these are not going to be good enough for like a trellis type of application to save them for next year. So we'll get rid of those. Why don't you bring your fork in here and we'll see what we have. You want to get back far enough that just like growing, uh, digging potatoes, you don't want to dig or puncture the, the tubers here. All right, let's see what we have. Whoop, easy now. Let's see if I can. Oh, look at that. Now you can just take these, just as they are here, they're, you know, you get some knobby ones, scrub them off, scrub them off, uh, slice them thin and put them a little dip, you know, like ranch or something, they work just great. So we've got this black tray here for obvious reasons, one for storage and two so we can knock the dirt off of these plants. So I just put that in there. Look at that guy, look at that, that's all one. Let's see what else we can get here. Oh, and we just keep digging and they just keep popping up. Look how pretty those are. Now these are not related to any shape, size, or form to the artichoke that you, know, you would know of, the globe type artichoke. These are a totally different type of Jerusalem artichoke and based on where you live at in the world, you might have these growing wild. They grow very prevalent and they have, you know, just tall flowers so you may not know you have Jerusalem artichokes on your property. Let's see what else we've got here. Let me go on this side here. I think we've got about all on that one, which is very impressive. And this is actually our first time growing these, so we're really excited to, oh, there's another to, one. to get them out of the ground and, and get them set to go and get hopefully more next year. Now, if you're wanting to know how to store these for seed, one, they'll keep coming back because obviously they're like potatoes. You're never going to extract everything out of the area. Two, the best way to store them would be take the ones you're wanting for seed Put them in a bucket with a little bit of soil on the bottom and a little bit of soil on top so they're submerged so they can't get no light and they'll store great in the basement. At least that's what we've been told. We're going to experiment with that over the winter months. So let's go ahead and get the rest of this all. I don't know if we got 8 to 10 pounds, but we've sure got a lot from one plant right here. And this was one of the smaller plants that we had. Look at that. It's all grew in that root. Let's see. So we're going to get uh, the next two harvested and we'll see what we have. Okay, so this is what we got from three plants up here and then also a really large plant we had back here. It's something that we recommend growing off. You don't want an invasive plant in your garden. 
you can grow it in a container. We've done that where you bury it under the ground in the container. It's something that comes back year after year. It's a good perennial and it's something that you can have for many years to come. So we got our strawberry patch here and we got to do some work on it. And the reason being, you'd think, oh, we've got a lot of strawberries. I'm going to step into bed here. We got a lot of strawberries. Things look real good. Well, actually, there's a point where you can have too many strawberries in one area and it actually decreases the quantity and the quality of the berries you have. Our case in point. We've got a lot of, lot of berries here. Now, we've taken a significant amount of runners. I think we took like 80 some odd runners off of this patch and distributed it from the sister-in-law's garden to the here to the front yard. But the problem we have is that in the spring when the plants put up berries on, it gets too thick. There's not enough sunlight, not enough wind, not enough air circulation, and the berries begin to rot and mold inside on the vine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sacrifice some of the plants in our bed. We're gonna make three distinct rows, four really, with a six inch gap so we can walk through, decreasing the quantity of the berries to increase the quantity of the berries. Something you may want to consider in your strawberry patch. Hey, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Barrett and this has been a Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. For more organic gardening and food preserving, visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. The show never ends on our Facebook page. Keyword, Wisconsin Vegetable Gardeners. Like the page and continue the discussion there. You can now follow us on Twitter, see what we're up to and what we're doing at the garden. The address, the W-I, Veg Gardener, G-A-R-D-E-N-R. -E you can email us at the W-I, Veg Gardener at gmail.com with your questions, comments, or suggestions about the show.